Okay, it looks like we're live. Awesome. Um, well, welcome everyone to the 2024 AI Outlook New Data and Strategies for Agencies. Um, I am your host today, Ruan Marino, and I'm joined with Santi Clark over at Duda. And we're going to be talking about some really exciting things today. And we're, you're going to leave this webinar having some new actionable insights that you can use today to get better outcomes from your AI and also understanding um, the outlook for AI. Um, and so from there, I'm going to wait for a couple of moments to make sure that everybody can access the webinar and then we'll get started. Um, Santi, are you excited today? Oh, I'm pumped. This is one of my favorite topics is talking about how AI can help us do our jobs better. And, and you know, it's a great way to start and kick off the year. So you're, you're not you're not worried about it replacing you. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? I'm, I'm embracing AI. I'm ready to to use it and get the most value out of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good and positive mindset to have. And, um, you know, being an agency owner, I'm very excited to see some of your thought leadership and some of the data that you guys have done in your recent survey to kind of tell us um, some of the more broad terms of what's really going on. Um, and so what's your just really curious before we get started and gives people some chatter to talk about what is your favorite part of AI right now? I love seeing just the unique applications that people are doing, the different ways that they're using it. I, it's it's amazing to just kind of, every time someone shows me, it's it's very cool. It's something different. Um, and I'm like, oh, I hadn't thought about that before. And so I just see this energy and this excitement around AI and, and it's intoxicating. It's very fun. Um, but yeah, I'm very curious too, to see what our, what our audience thinks about AI and what they're excited about as well. Yeah. And, and we talked a little bit before we actually got on the live stream and um, we were talking a little bit about um, you know, how I haven't seen something this big in our industry um, for a long time. Oh, so absolutely. It's definitely a mover and a shaker. And anytime something big changes, there's a lot of discussion. So I'm happy to be on today. Um, let's let's get a quick count from those of you that are watching where you guys are from. Uh, we have Hans, who's from Mag Mo Mongolia. We have uh, David from Sarasota, Florida. Shout out, Florida. Uh, we have Anton, who's in Slovakia. We have Carol, who's in Brazil, and that's actually where I'm from. So good to see you, Carol. That's how you would probably say your name, Carol. Uh, David from Atlanta. Shout out to Atlanta, which is a great place. The United Kingdom, Singapore. So we have people dialing in from a bunch of different places. Um, Santi, where are you dialing in from? I'm here in our Louisville, Colorado office. So it's, which is beautiful, uh, by the way. Yeah, nice and sunny, but also some snow. So we got a good mix of things. Yeah, it's uh, great to be from Colorado. I'm sure you could probably ski and snowboard a lot. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. we've got some from Canada. Yeah, some Canada going on, some England. Really, that's why, and that's one of the reasons I love the Duda community so much is because it's really like all over the place, uh, international, oh. which is super cool. Web Designer School from India. Um, shout out to India. Thank you for joining. We're going to be covering some amazing information today, and I can't wait, and I'm excited, and I want to get started now, but we uh, we want to give it the proper time. We have Switzerland, we have Sweden, um, and yeah, it's just a very healthy amount of people from all around the world. Um, and so one of the main things that we're going to be diving into today is um, a couple of the different things that Santi has discovered through the Duda survey. Um, I'm going to show you guys a couple of things that we're doing here at Developmark that you can take away today and make your AI efficiencies even better with a simple account. And this relates to websites and Duda and all these other tools that you may be using, um, because I always like to make sure that people leave with something that they can actually use. So I'm going to show you behind the curtains a little bit about how we're using it. And then Santi's going to cover some amazing information. Um, from there, uh, we can get started. Sweet. Sweden is our last uh, location here. Awesome. Yeah, let's get our slides going here. Uh, Ron, you want to intro? Yeah, yeah, one? yeah. So th this is it. 2024 AI Outlook. New data and strategies for agencies specifically, especially if you're looking to make more money. That is what these slides are about, is about you improving your efficiencies. And that does not mean your clients have to lose out on quality. I think that's oh, one of the biggest misconceptions ever. It's not true. Quality has actually gotten better. 
So we're, let's go through it. So today we're joined by myself, um, Ruan, a, a proud owner of Developmark, which is a Duda specific website company. And then we have Santi. Santi, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm the, the director of content and communications here at Duda, again, based out of our Colorado office. I'm super excited to share with you the results of some of our research that we've been doing into how agencies are using AI and the results there, uh, and also to get to, um, to be able to share some actionable insights for you as you plan for your 2024 AI strategy. Um, so I think we'll dive, go ahead and dive right in. So as you know, AI is, is, has been all the hype since uh, the, this past year. Obviously, ChatGPT was a huge, uh, a huge explosion onto the scene, and, and we've been trying to keep pace and, and do, make sure that we're doing the right things and, and staying uh, uh, the course here. So uh, as you can see here, as we think about this in terms of Gartner's hype cycle, this is about where we were at the beginning of last year. Lots of excitement, lots of engagement. We're starting to see uh, really getting into more of the kind of stabilization here. Tools are being released. Obviously, a lot of them uh, are really, really valuable, which we'll get into later in the survey results. Um, and so, yeah, we're tracking this and we're, we're paying attention to this uh, as part of the Duda platform and making sure that we understand uh, what you need as an agency um, and we want to share those insights with you. Uh, so obviously, there have been new tools promising SMB's instant results. Uh, these have been domi had dominated the headlines early last year. A lot of dramatic headlines questioning the value of the agency. But of course, we see that, and I, I alluded to this earlier. Like we're not we're not con necessarily concerned about this. We're seeing this as an opportunity to really, like Ruan said, um, capture value offer more value to our clients and again, make more money as an agency. So that's a really, really exciting opportunity. Um, but we really wanted to understand uh, what that means for agencies. So we surveyed 200 digital agency owners across the entire uh, world, uh, agencies ranging from two to 100 employees across North America, Europe and Australia. We asked them, what are you using AI for? How is it ad adding value to your business? Um, and what are the risks? What are the challenges that you're facing? And what are the opportunities? Uh, and that's what we'll be diving into today is the results of that survey. And, and Ruan here will be offering a perspective too as an agency owner who is using AI within his business to kind of add some color to uh, the research that we're presenting today. So first of all, no surprise to anyone, but the fear of missing out is very real when it comes to AI. Um, and it's dri driven widespread adoption. So 84% of our agencies uh, that we surveyed said that they're concerned about keeping pace with AI. Um, and because of that, every single one of them said that they are already using AI within their workflows, already experimenting. And this data was collected uh, in the beginning of Q4 of last year. So this is, this is something we only expect to continue uh, going through the rest of this year. The great news though, is that we saw that agencies were very quick to adopt it with immediate value to their business. So one of the areas, the key areas that they're already seeing value in is updating and creating content. Obviously, this is a, a pretty standard example. 93% um, of the agencies we surveyed said they're already using AI to update their site content. And 60% of them almost said that they're already seeing good results from this, which is super exciting that not only in this year of, of transformation, uh, the agencies are already not just using it, but starting to see really strong results and strong value uh, is really exciting and, and promising to see. And Ruan, I, I would love to get your feedback here too on how your agency is seeing this in terms of results uh, from using AI. Yeah, so we're a very interesting case because we had access to ChatGPT3 when it was available. And so we've been using it for quite some time. And initially, clients didn't like it the information was not as good as it is today because the model was just a lot older. And so what we're finding today is content is still the main use case that we use the AI for. It has dramatically lowered our time to produce good content, but also clients actually like the content and it's human readable, which was very important to us. So we have this shift in the moment in our agency where we, we, we were testing how good is the AI content and we sent it to a client and they approved it. And so at that point, they were the expert and the content was readable. At that point, we went all in on AI. And this was about two years ago. So a lot of agencies are already seeing this. A lot of them are already using AI in their business. And majorities of them are probably doing content. But that's what I'm really excited about later because a lot of agencies probably don't realize there's a lot more things that you can do with it that's going to directly impact your profit margins. So almost everything about our brand has seen a positive uplift from AI. I guess the scary thing is, is we don't know what the negative is yet until the kind of the program gets a little bigger. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's a great point too. As, obviously content is was the first, one of the first big use cases and people are still very much focused on it. We'll get into that a little bit later, but really I think the exciting part is the many, many different ways that you can use it. We already saw in our agency survey that 92% of agencies are using it for SEO, which is very, very interesting. And 40% of those are already seeing results from AI assisted SEO. So again, so very exciting spaces, uh, which we'll get into a little bit more details in, in, in a little bit. Uh, when it comes to the the value, the tools that agencies find the most valuable, not surprisingly, ChatGPT kind of comes out at the top here. Same with Dolly and Bard. These are these are tools that have gotten a lot of press, a lot of a lot of attention, um, and have a lot of value. You know, they're relatively inexpensive. They're easy to use. Uh, the bar to entry is pretty pretty low here. What we're seeing here at the bottom with integrated AI tools, we expect that to increase a lot over the coming year as more and more technology platforms start embedding. AI within their existing solutions and making it so seamless for your workflows. So instead of having to embed or, or task switch between ChatGPT and another platform to be able to have that seamless experience and the tools that you're already using, we expect to see that really grow uh, as we move into the new year and even into 2025 and beyond. Um, and very interesting to see the poll results here of, it looks like 80% of the, of 88% uh, here are already using AI within your businesses. Super exciting. So a lot of this isn't new to you, um, but it will be very helpful as you're benchmarking how your agency uh, is doing relative to other leaders in the space. And, and uh, Ruan, would love to hear your perspective on what tools you guys have found the most valuable in your agency. Yeah, so I'm a brand loyalist, which basically means when I fall in love with a brand, it's I'm all in on it. Um, Dude is one of those brands, and OpenAI is one of those brands. So to me, the other ones don't even exist. Um, ChatGPT is by far the most powerful model we've found. And they're most powerful because they're developer friendly. And you can build, like you said, integrated AI features. And that's what's going to happen in the near future is everything's going to have some sort of AI integrated. And OpenAI has done such a good job at that. And not only that, it's the best result we've seen. So um, we're primarily only using OpenAI and MidJourney in this situation. Um, but the key there is making sure that we use the one that our clients like the most ultimately at the end of the day. And that one for us has been ChatGPT. Absolutely. Yeah, super important that you're focusing on the areas that are giving the client results that you, you need and, and helping you de deliver that quality. Um, so then when it comes to actually, how do you actually measuring these AI success, uh, whether or not your AI uh, implement implementation is successful, agencies are largely looking at cost savings. This isn't super surprising. Obviously, AI is very, very helpful at driving efficiency and helping us um, save time, save costs, things like that. Uh, so that comes out at the top of the list with three out of, uh, 10 agencies saying that they are using cost savings to measure their success, um, as well as client satisfaction. Again, I think that's very important to call out in this. That's uh, the third most uh, used leading success indicator, and it ties in perfectly with what uh, Ruan has been, has been talking about here. Now, what are they actually saving? So this is very interesting. I think we, again, we surveyed a lot of different agencies of various sizes. These numbers are still pretty small for 2023. So the weighted average for all annual savings from uh, AI for agencies was uh, just under $3,000 for the year of 2023. That's not a lot. It does scale up. So as agencies get bigger, the more and more uh, savings that they were able to see. And what we'll do is we'll, sh we'll also share the, the full survey results with you. So you can drill down into these specifics after the webinar. Um, but what's really exciting to us is seeing the increase in what agencies are expecting to see in 2024. They're expecting these savings to more than double. So again, small numbers, but this growth is is evident and this growth is is um, yeah, is happening very quickly here. So very curious if anyone in the audience has had any feedback on what they're seeing in terms of AI cost-driven savings or Ruan, if you wanted to weigh on in, the, in on this as well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what I'd love to do is if you're in the chat, um, if you have had significant savings, type in A. If you have had some savings, type in B. And if you have had no measurable savings or you don't feel like you can put your finger on it, type in C. I want to see what you guys think. Because to me, we've had a significant financial savings, but we've also improved our efficiency, which is very difficult to track by a number. So Absolutely. we're able to cancel several softwares. And, the, and what we're going to show you today is going to allow you to really, really use one ChatGPT for multiple things. And then also we were able to improve our team's time and improve our output, which improved service, which included our retainers. It made them bigger. 
So ultimately, we we got more profitable. So although we look at it as a savings, Developmark really saw just a massive amount of profit in both peace of mind, but also revenue savings or uh, annual savings. But we've got a couple of things going on here. We've got a bunch of A's, which I kind of figured if you're using it on the daily, um, you're definitely in the A category. And then we have C, which is starting to explore the capabilities. And this is a great place to start if you're looking to explore the capabilities. Yeah, absolutely. We've got another C here as well. Very cool. I'm very excited to see all the A's too. I think that that's uh, obviously reinforces what we're seeing, but very, very exciting. Um, we also asked our agency owners what their expected budgets were for, for 2024 when it comes to AI. And what's really, really interesting here is we see agencies going all pretty much all in on AI. They're not just, you know, being conservative, they're they're investing, they're spending more than even what they're saving in 2023 back into AI in 2024. Um, knowing that this is expected to grow and, and that they're expected to continue to see savings here. So this is very exciting and I think lines up again with what we're seeing and what we're seeing in the chat here today as well. Um, the question now too, again, is where we first are seeing these first areas of investment. So again, content is really king here. Um, and this is where we really wanna push the envelope today and push beyond uh, thinking just about content. So when we asked our agency owners where they're planning to spend their budgets for AI, Content is is at the top of the list. Content strategy. We've got editing content. We've got writing content. SEO. Uh, a little bit of personalization and design in here as well. But again, very very content and content experience uh, focused. Uh, not on this slide specifically, but we we also asked them about how they're using it with web building, and that was a little bit lower on the list. But again, we do expect and, and are excited to see that increase over the next couple of years. Um, and again, tying in, but the future of AI is so much more than content uh, for agencies. Uh, this was one of personally my what I thought was one of the most exciting results of our surveys. Agencies really do expect AI to transform their businesses in 2024. Uh, this is just one uh, call out here is 86% of the agency owners we surveyed said they expect AI to help them actually go down market and serve more diverse clients in 2024. Whether those were it's helping them, you know, reach out and, and serve more price sensitive clients that might have been too costly to, to serve before. Um, or just expand uh, their capabilities without necessarily expanding their team. Uh, this is a really, really huge uh, breakthrough and opportunity. And Ruan, I would love to hear your experience as an agency owner. How are you seeing this already in your business? Well, I think content was the first part, but for now it's really getting more use cases from the AI because now the AI can actually read external data that you own. And so when we connected our AI to our Duda platform, we were able to manage a lot of our customer stuff related in one chat, actually, that I kind of showed you in our last call, Santi. So I think it's going to transform our businesses in that developers who understand our problems, agency owner problems, they're going to develop these niche AIs that are going to allow us to do one thing really well. And I think all of that is going to live within the ChatGPT store. When you mentioned in the beginning of the call that there's been a lot of articles coming out of new products that are happening, I think this year that's going to expand even further simply because OpenAI is allowing people to create their own version of AIs, which we're going to show you here today. Absolutely. Yes, and that's actually a great transition into our next section of let's open it up. Let's see what else, Ruan, you are doing with uh, using AI in many different impactful ways across your agency. Um, and we'll we'll transition here over and and and. Ruan, I believe you'll share your screen to actually dive into some really specific and very cool examples that he's been using within this agency. Yes, definitely. And I'm going to ask that the audience bears with me because I, this is ChatGPT and sometimes ChatGPT4, there's too much people using it. So the server will actually get tired and it won't show the result. Um, but what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to share my screen. And then Santi, when you can see my screen, it should say Pure Skin AI. Just give me a confirmation. I see it on the screen. Excellent. So Pureskin is a Duda website that we've made with the Duda platform. And what you can see here is that this is ChatGPT, as you can see by the interface, but it's a custom AI built for this client who's, who's on our Duda platform. So I'm going to show you kind of the range and how flexible AI can actually be without actually only just generating content. And so in this case scenario, what I'm looking to do is I'm just looking for the AI to read the Duda project within Duda by using the API. And if you guys aren't familiar, what that means is Duda gives its developers uh, an API key that allows external sources like ChatGPT to read 
that information. So as you can see, what this is doing is it is reading all of the information related to the Duda website directly inside of ChatGPT. Now, the reason why this is important for you is because instead of you having to prompt information about the client, you can set up an AI that is already understanding of that client so that it produces better results. Uh, now that that information looks good, what I'm going to ask it to do is I'm going to get a, a real use case. And in this situation, I'm going to ask it to find the last five contact form submissions through Duda and only show me contact form submissions that have mentioned Botox within this date. Now, keep in mind, if the AI for some reason fails because it, sometimes it loses internet connection, um, I will go ahead and kind of just show you what, when I did it before. But as you can see, it talks to the API, which is the Duda one in this case scenario. Then what it does, it'll actually return that information from the Duda contact form directly inside of a ChatGPT conversation. The reason why this is important is because if you're creating content, you're going to want to really make sure that your content that's being created is custom. And the best way to do that is by having the AI actually talk to your site data. So in this case scenario, in this one little use case of how we would use this, I'm going to bring you through how we would get some advanced SEO done by just using one conversation inside of this platform. Now, the cool part about this is that now that it's read some of the contact inform information, I can now have this ChatGPT talk to a different tool. In this case, I'm going to say, let's talk to SEMrush. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it find 10 potential keywords to target related to the Botox service for the med spa. And now what ChatGPT is going to do in this case scenario is it's actually going to do my keyword research for me by talking to SEM Rush. And as you guys know, if you're doing SEO, you need to know what keywords are ranking for the different terms that are important to the business. So in this case scenario, you can see it's having a couple of issues talking to the actual uh, SEMrush API. But what I did was on this screen is I actually went ahead and did it beforehand just in case we had some internet connection issues. So after it did it, it actually went out and found the most potential keywords that were related to Botox and it put them in a table and actually read the search uh, SEM rush volume data. So now I have clear indication of what to target when I look at these keyword phrases. And what's really cool about this is now that I have that information, I can now use that information as context to go even further and now have the AI actually start to recommend topics that they found that were important based on those keyword phrases. And then going further, ChatGPT provides a, uh, you know, now what I can do is I can actually prompt ROI data based on the term. So in this case scenario, the prompt was using these terms, assuming a 2% click through rate, 15% site conversion and average order value of 699. Now ChatGPT combined with Duda, SEMrush and its native ability can actually show me for every single term what the client potential ROI is if they rank at the top of the search results for these keywords and then even give me a total ROI. Taking it a step further, we can then go in and look at the expected profit would be daily, weekly, monthly or whatever metrics you wanna see. So now I can give the customer clear expectations of potential revenue for engaging in a service like SEO for Botox. Then going even further, this is probably the part that gets me the most excited is that now that we have context, my prompt becomes very little. In this case, it's just, now show me what this would look like for lip fillers and what ChatGPT is gonna do because it has all of the context within this conversation with this custom AI. It's now going to do the same formula, which is find the SEM rush keywords, look at the different search volume for each of the terms, and then provide an expected ROI with the same calculations that it did above and show me that expected profit on a daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly level. And this is really exciting because instead of me having to download spreadsheets, go look at my contact forms, do math, use different tools, use a bunch of different windows, I foresee a future in which we're already building at Developmark that a lot of our work is done within a simple chat interface. And kind of the cool thing about this is you can also look at, you can connect multiple different tools to one chat interface using some of the advanced API calls. And a lot of the softwares that you're using probably provide those different types of things. And so you can work with different APIs at the same time. For this example, I just prompted using Moz, check the spam score for this client. In this event, I didn't even have to put the domain because the AI already knows the client because it's custom and Duda gives you that information. So for this example, it's showing me using the Moz API, 
website information for PureSkin. It's showing me page authority, domain authority, link propensity, and all of these other metrics that you can get from Moz. But what's really amazing about this is you can work with multiple tools in one chat interface, and it all starts with the tool really understanding the website so that when I create content, or when I use this AI specifically, or when the customer uses AI, they don't have to explain everything about the business to the AI. It already knows everything because it's already connected to a lot of its different platforms. So in this situation, um, you can keep the conversation going and you can prompt brand new information. So for this example, if I wanted to prompt, now show me this situation if they wanted to target, let's say, um, injectables, which is one of their main services. And uh, from there, what's going to happen is you can see this is a fresh prompt. Um, OpenAI is going to go ahead and talk to Duda. It's going to talk to SEMrush. And then it's actually going to run its own Python code. And when it does that, what it's doing now is, since it knows PureSkin, it knows my prompt, it's going to search SEMrush's database to find keywords that are similar to injectables, sort them from highest to lowest, and then calculate what the ROI is for those different services and provide me the result daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly. If you've done SEO and you've done any sort of marketing, you could probably imagine how insane being able to just move through this data this quickly is. And it all starts with having it be closely tied to the tools that you're already using. So in this case, it's going to show me all of the different types of injectable keywords that the client should target because it knows the client. And then it's going to show me the expected ROI with the calculations that I had on the right side. And the amazing part about this is with every single thing that you prompt, it's going to give you only that information back to you, which is different than using a traditional software, like a visual software, where you would have to read charts and analyze data. Let me show you an example of what that might look like. We've also got some questions in the chat here, Ruan. I don't know if you want to pause here yeah. and answer some of these. Yeah. So um, we've got a we've got a question here from uh, Personal Brand Pro. I've tried using SEMrush with ChatGPT four and constantly given errors. What am I missing here? Um, and okay, I've tried using SEMrush. Tried to return. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot of programming knowledge that you'll have to use. And probably the best thing to do is to try the one that we have publicly in the store so you can see how it works and try to replicate. But what you have to do is, is you're gonna have to have an API for each of the tools that you wanna bring in. And so for example, the tool we're working with, which is called Splashdash, and it's available in the ChatGPT store and it's completely free. You'll basically, um, we have API access with SEMrush, uh, Moz, Ahrefs, and a lot of these tools that we already use. Um, so you'd have to do some development around it, um, but ultimately, like it's not a button you can click yet that just brings in the data, although that's probably going to be the reality of our future very soon. You'll be able to log in and authenticate and then gather that data over. If that's not the case, we're building a tool that has all of them combined. We also have a question here. How are you getting profit information per service? Is this from the client or generic info from the Internet? Great question. So the way that you would do this is you would ask the customer, um, you know, how many, how many, uh, out of how many leads you sold, what was the average revenue per customer? So in this case scenario, if pure skin gets 10 leads and they sell 10 Botox treatments at 699, their expected profit is $6,999. That's the beautiful thing about using outside data and ChatGPT is that it can quickly show you these different financial situations because it's not a hypothesis. It's using data. If you try to tell ChatGPT yourself, it might not give you some of those things because it doesn't have solid data to work with. So imagine a world where the AI is connected to all of the important business information of a customer or a, an agency customer, and quickly they can find out a lot of these metrics themselves with the chat interface that you manage. Absolutely. And then there's one final question here that I think is a really good one. Can you trust these results? What would you not have to double check just in case? Um, I think that speaks a lot to like how we're leveraging AI and what the best practices are here. In, and look, I mean, this is the best solution you're going to find. This is definitely a very advanced solution. The way, the reason why we trust this data is because it's using a data that trusted companies have. Absolutely. For example, if ChatGPT talked to a Bank of America account, do you trust that Bank of America has the correct financial information? Well, they should. Now, if you use ChatGPT to just try to make up results, it's probably going to be a hallucination, which is, in other words, it providing false results. Using API data is critical because you're leveraging the expertise of SEMrush, AREFs, whatever SEO tool it is that you're using, and then it's making predictions based on those terms. So in a sense, 
you should check ultimately to make sure it's right. So it's not just providing hallucination because it's not perfect and that will happen. But ultimately we've seen 85% of the time, we don't have to check at all. As long as we're using API data that another company has worked hard to gather. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good point that obviously AI is only as good as the data that you're feeding it. So having that direct access via API is very helpful and, and will help you get better results. Um, yeah, I think that was it for the questions for now so we can trans transition back. Awesome. Yeah, and I mean, I think um, back to what people were saying, I see one right there that there's a pretty big monthly cost for smaller companies. Um, the monthly cost for the chat GPT isn't necessarily what's big. That's only $20 a month, which is extremely valuable. The, the reality is, is there is a store now that you can actually access if you have the four. And I just want to show you what this would look like if you just want to try and see kind of what the data is that you can get. So in this case scenario, you don't need an account with anything and you can start using some of these tools. So if I wanted to, um, perform keyword research with SpyFu and I'm working, you know, with a dentist, provide me 10 good terms. Um, you don't even need a SpyFu account. You don't need an Ahrefs account. You don't need a Semrish account. You just identify what you want to call and we don't collect any information about you. Um, GPT actually doesn't allow its developers to collect the information. And then from here, you can actually start to work with the tools that we already have integrated in and start using these for free. Um, so massive value for anybody using SEO. And ultimately, the reason why we're doing this is because we're trying to find better ways to use the AI further than just creating content. Um, so that's completely available now if you have a ChatGPT4 account. And what's cool about this is, is you can continue to use this conversation to make your results a lot better. Um, and in terms of the due to cost, I see that that is a question. Um, I, uh, Santi, I'll kind of let you get into that. I know Developmark is on some sort of an enterprise program, but I believe a lot of the plans offer API. Yeah, all of our custom plans offer API, so that we, that is the um, the plan that they would need to have to have that access. But as you can see, there's a lot of really really cool applications that you can do with the Duda uh, API, including but not limited to uh, pulling in this into AI and being able to do all of these really cool applications with customer uh, and client management and uh, even you know, client acquisition and things like that. So uh, definitely very, very exciting uh, options and possibilities there. And obviously a lot of things that you can do that are gonna save costs and save uh, expenses for your for your business when you can implement these things and get the most value out of out of combining these tools in a way that, that gives you so much value. Totally. And now that we're kind of on the Duda API um, conversation, I think it's really important that I just show um, everyone like kind of some of the things that you can do so um, like, for example, if I wanted to pull the 301 redirects that are like a technical, right? So if you have a technical conversation, pull the 301 redirects to top 10 of the site. And so this is an example of how um, the AI would communicate with Duda specifically to pull those top 10 results. And so because that endpoint is available from Duda, you're able to bring in those top 10 redirects directly within the chat platform. And that's just one way that you can do it too. Now there's more things that you can do, things like gather top pages that mention, and then you can put in a term. So you can actually do these pretty smart filters. That's what's probably the most exciting part about this is no one's gonna write the same prompts. So everyone's gonna get the information from the API exactly how they want, because we're moving into this generative art world where you're just telling the computer what you want, it's connected to a bunch of things, and it provides you that result. So in this case scenario, what it's doing is it's showing me pretty technical information um, about this actual result. So the question was to pull a technical thing and then it talked to the API really quickly and then responded with those results. The other one is give me the top 10 pages. And so now what it's doing is it's giving me all of the pages that mention Botox um, directly within the chat conversation. So that's a really cool feature about it as well. One of the other really cool things that I love about it too, specifically using um, any API like Duda's and then using OpenAI's native abilities is you can do the date. So if I wanted to get site stats from, and I put in a date, let's say I did today or the first, and then I did two, let's say today, which is the 18th. What's, what's cool about that is Duda is going to uh, give ChatGPT the information just for those specific dates and then ChatGPT is gonna respond using the filter. So you're almost turning into a, a, a working situation here 
where you're only getting what you ask for and you're not getting the entire um, login information from all of these different things. You're just using one chat interface, using the filtering and getting exactly what you want from the actual site. And what's cool about this as well is showing you another native ability. Now, what if I did now show me site stats uh, for, and let's say I did a December type of date range. Let's say I did this 2023 and then I did 12, 18, 2023. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare these results. I'm using two API calls here, and then I'm gonna get the two API calls next to each other, which is using the due to API. And then I'm gonna have ChatGPT now compare the results. And then what I'm gonna do is in percentages and explain. And so what's gonna happen now is, now it's not gonna have to call an API. It's just gonna use the information in the context window of the API. It's gonna run some programming that it does automatically. This should already be happening in your account. You don't need anything for it to do the programming. And then it's gonna give me the comparison of those stats of side by side, which remember, if you just were normally using GPT, you would have to give it this information and then do the context. In this situation, I wrote a couple of words and now I'm getting meaningful marketing data right in front of me exactly what I'm looking for. Another situation, now I wanna see the last five backups. I wanna see when the last time the site was backed up. For account management, if you give your customers a solution like this, they're never gonna leave you if, as long as you're doing other things well. But this is going to allow them to do a lot of this account management communication, checking site stats, checking their AI, all within their own um, account. So in this case scenario, um, I don't think it went in, but now show me the last five backups. Um, in this case scenario, I'm just going to show you another example. And let's say I wanted to see the last five backups from the site. It's going to talk to Duda, no problem, result, and then it's going to give you back the five uh, last backups. So not only can the AI cover extremely technical information, it can also do really cool content marketing, checking the forms, checking the stats, doing keyword research. And remember, a lot of this is available and you don't need any account directly within the Splash Dash My GPT that Developmark has created. We've got a couple other questions here in the chat. This is awesome, by the way. And, and here, this question calls that out. Looks awesome. Uh, bring new tech, bring, being new to technology, this technology, how confident are you that sharing ROI and revenue predictions will be accurate? I think this is very similar to that question before. Yeah, I mean, so I'm gonna bring it back to where we were and let's let's kind of go through that together. Um, we've seen it to be extremely accurate. Um, now remember, it is an AI and it, it will hallucinate, so double check your work, but let's just bring it back to where we were here. So remember, just bringing, breaking down this data. So what it did was it found using SEMrush, remember this is not ChatGPT's data, so I can I can confidently rely on it. If you rely on SEMrush Google, then these terms are pretty straightforward. And then it's giving me the search volume for each term. And then what I mentioned was, if these terms had a 2% click-through rate, and then the site had a 15% conversion rate, meaning they, they, they closed 15% of the people that contact them through the site, and an average order value of 699. So that's the math that it's performing. What is the ROI per term? So now what it's doing here is it's taking the term, it's taking the volume, and then it's multiplying it by the metrics that I mentioned. And then it's giving me an expected ROI. It's totaling that information. And then I'm telling it to provide me the daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly revenue now that it already has context. And then it's doing some of this information here. So to do the math kind of clean, what I'm gonna do is now provide me with ROI information around, <coughs> I'll do laser hair removal, and then I'll tell it to use the same formula as before. And then keep in mind, what it's doing now is it's going to search SEMrush, find the top 10 laser hair removal terms that the company should target, it's going to sort them by volume, largest to high, or, uh, largest to smallest. Then it's going to perform the Python, which is native to ChatGPT. You can see it found the terms. It found how many people are searching it. It's doing the math, the click-through rate, the conversion, the average order value. And then the result is going to be the uh, expected revenue or profit per term. So keep in mind, 
The data is only going to be as accurate as much as you feed it. But a key situation here is actually having the APIs connected to these the software. And so ours is called Splashdash. You can feel free to use it and you can do the same information. You don't need to connect your Duda account to it. You can't even connect your Duda account to it. It's completely just open. Um, but that's how we're kind of getting this information. And you can see the beauty of once you train it once and you tell it to do it for different things, you can do data collection at a pretty significant level. So if I'm talking to a client, I can say, well, clearly we need to focus more on hair removal because this is where a lot of your ROI is going to come from. And the only way that this is knowing this is based on volume. So that's kind of how it's doing it. It's connecting information from Samrush. Then it's, it's doing Python to read it and provide the ROI expectations. But the information that you feed it ultimately will be as quality as it. And then, of course, you can do the Python math yourself and just make sure that this is done correctly. Um, a lot of the times, just by looking at this, I can tell you it's done, it's done pretty well. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, any GPT implementations to streamline data collection from clients to build Duda websites? Uh, this is a great question. And actually, I'll, I'll just highlight that this is something that's actually something we're planning to build into the platform natively. Uh, I don't know, Ron, do you have any ideas here on or anything you've used already uh, to do something like this? Yeah. So there is, um, if you have a GPT-4 account specifically, there is, um, I don't think you actually, you might not need four. I just recommend using four. Um, there is ability to connect GPT to Zapier directly. And so if you complete an intake survey, for example, if a client says that they do dental cleanings, that intake survey can talk to GPT and then provide a prompt as a result. And so you can basically get all of the content written by having a customer complete an onboarding survey. Um, in terms of data collection, there's also things that you can integrate with the MyGPT, like your analytics account and your, you know, if you're tracking projects at SEMrush or if you're doing anything agency related, you should be able to look at the data at that way. But streamlining data collection, we found is ultimately talking with the customer and taking down information. So Zoom offers a really good summary AI. So you don't actually have to take down notes anymore. It actually does that really well for you. So I would say um, for data collection specifically, there's no way to get it done other than just physically talking with the customer on a Zoom call like this. And then for if you want to automate something, set up ChatGPT with Zapier. So when that they complete a form for collection, then ChatGPT can write content based on their form input. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, another question here for any of the custom GPTs that are pitched to a client, I assume the client would need a paid account themselves. You that is correct. Yeah. 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 So a client's going to need GPT four to access your my GPT. Um, uh, and, and, and basically if they can, then they can use your, your specific solution that you manage yourself. Um, now, of course, um, a lot of developers like ourselves are working on solutions where you don't need a GPT-4 account. Um, so you can just log into it and start using it however you see fit. Um, that is one of the biggest liability or the, one of the biggest issues with it is when we did our own survey, we found that only 6% of people actually pay for ChatGPT and 93% actually uh, use the free version. So 94%. That's interesting. Lower than I expected, honestly. Yeah. Um, another question here. What do you, you use for the output to create a sales SEO audit with this info from ChatGPT? Yeah, I mean, in that in that regard, you can use tools like Splashdash in the GPT store and you can put in the domain and you can have Moz perform an entire domain audit on it. Um, you can have SpyFu perform a keyword audit on it and then you can have SEMrush run a domain audit, audit over it. And then from there, you can then go ahead and prompt GPT to write you a personalized audit email. And so at that point, it would take the information that you pulled in from the integrations, and then it would perfect and uh, it would write out your audit in the form of an email, or you can put that into some sort of slides. There is the ability to cite audit from SEMrush and a lot of these tools directly in, AP, in, in OpenAI. The only con with that is you wouldn't be able to use a tool like Splashdash, which is publicly available, and you don't need to connect your account at all. You don't need an Ahrefs account at all to use Ahrefs in there. You would have to make your own and connect your own uh, Ahrefs API to get that project data. But ultimately, you could do a lot of um, SEMrush. Um, you could use a lot of tools inside of there to actually get that done natively without having any of them, which is amazing because a lot of our clients don't want to pay for that. It's very, they're very expensive if you're not using it for like clients and stuff like that. For sure. And are these accurate for predictions a year out is another question we have in the chat here. 
That's a really good question. Um, and, and once again, that, that kind of goes back to um, what we were doing before. If you were to take the context of what you were doing, in this case scenario, it was um, this right here. So if you were to take the expected profit, um, you know, a year out would basically mean how much are you going to make a year from it? The only thing that the AI doesn't take into context because it physically can't, it doesn't have enough information, is that businesses are down and up every week, every single month, and things just change. So today they might make $760. Tomorrow they might make nothing. The next day they might make 10 grand, right? So uh, yearly is a really good metric to look at because it makes that average look a lot better. But if I were to continue this conversation because I have the API data and this information pulled in, I would say now create what that would look like you know, over the next 10 years and add total. So now that I already have this information kind of working in here within context, the AI is going to perform some Python code, which is native to the ChatGPT4. And you can read that Python code as it's doing it. And so what it's going to do is it's going to give me, um, so in this, in this sense, it, it's going to give me just that term which was 2.8. So you continue to prompt it to get the result that you're looking for. But what it's doing is it's taking this ROI and then showing you what that's going to look like over the next 10 years if I'm number one for that term. So yes, it can do the predictions. But once again, you've got to have your data super, super in within the context window, which is pretty big on ChatGPT4. Yeah, for sure. I love seeing your live example. Huge thanks. Are there any tools that can help interpret page speed metrics and make suggestions based on the data? I've been looking for something but haven't found anything yet. That's a great question. I would recommend going the splash dash in the GPT store because our team is working on integrating two or three APIs a week. And so by the end of this week, there's going to be new tools that you can use inside of it. Um, one of them is going to be all of Google's tools. So you're literally going to be able to put in a Google a URL and then it's going to be connected to Google PageSpeed and it's going to give you all that information in a conversational format. And then you can switch gears and then you can say, okay, what keyword should I target for ads? And then you're going to switch gears and all of that's going to be within one chat window. So right now there's not a perfect tool that does that, but that's exactly what we're going for with the AI is integrating all of our favorite tools into one place. That's awesome. And that's really the exciting part about AI is the community that's doing this. And, and, and to you, Ruan, thank you for sharing these examples. They're, I think, very helpful, very actionable. So uh, great feedback here in the chat as well. Um, transitioning back over to you, did you have, you had a couple other examples to share or are we, okay. Yeah, I do want to answer one question that Haas A put. And he mentioned, why would you provide client access to Splashdash GPT? Isn't it mostly for agencies to use? So we wouldn't provide the client access with Splashdash. That's more for if you just want to use our AI that's learning from all the data that we're collecting and all that we're, we're integrating with the APIs. A client would get their own private API. Um, so we would set up their site on Duda. We would then go ahead and connect their Duda account to their API and then give them that GPT. Um, in the near future, probably within the next couple months or so, we're not even going to use my GPT because a lot of them don't even pay for it. So that we're going to use something that's completely offside of chat GPT, but still uses the API for open AI, but we can't have client due to data in the open like that. So private for privacy reasons, they get a duplicate of our splash dash just with their custom site and banking information, et cetera. Um, and then drove to kind of go back on that is what's mm -hmm. the privacy implications for splash dash. Um, to answer your question, um, it's pretty amazing how it works. Because what OpenAI does is if you create a MyGPT, I cannot see any of your conversations within it. You can see how on this one in the public GPT store, um, we can't view any of your chats. Um, and neither do, I don't think people want to view your chats because there's a lot of privacy concerns with AI. Um, so by, natively, if you develop within OpenAI, the developers can't see most of your, any of your data unless you consent to it or unless they have it set there. But if they don't have it set, meaning like they respect your privacy, you'll see this little information icon that says this information. If you don't see that there, that means that the developer can see your API or your, or your connection information of what you type in and what the result is. Um, so I would recommend only using AIs that do this, which is not allowing them to view your chat. Excellent. Very cool. And that's that's kind of all I got. I want to show awesome. everyone, you know, how to use it without just thinking generating content. I know that's kind of the biggest use case. 
Yeah, absolutely. These are some really incredible use cases. And let's actually pull our slides back up. I've got a couple other uh, finishing slides as we as we close out the the hour here. Um, I know there was a lot of chatter in the in the chat here about our custom plans and API access and things like that. And I think this is a really great transition into talking about Duda's vision for AI. A, a little sneak peek at some of the things that we already have available within the platform and things that we're uh, building out over the, the coming uh, months. And a lot of these are things that are already part of uh, any agency plan that, that we would that you would have with Duda. Um, so really our, our, our perspective on AI is again, thinking way beyond content. We do have an AI content assistant built within the Duda platform. That's super exciting. I use it actually within my own workflows when we're, I'm writing content for the Duda site, uh, which is very exciting to be able to use and, and uh, you know, find value in the, the tools that we have uh, built into our platform. Uh, but we really see three major opportunities for agencies, and this is really guiding uh, our product roadmap and the things that we're building out within uh, within the platform. One is really boosting productivity, and I think Ruan uh, had some really great examples there from uh, being able to pull all of the different platforms together. Uh, but that's something we're also thinking about as we're building capabilities within the Duda platform itself, is how can we help you dynamically speed up your website building workflows from content collection, content generation, to SEO, to uh, gathering more opportunities and things like that. So really focusing on helping you boost your productivity as an agency. Helping you streamline your acquisition is another big one. So helping you personalize content at scale to drive more conversions without adding time and costs. And then really in empowering agencies to expand their services, establish new service offerings, increase customer stickiness, and drive cross and upsell opportunities. So those are the things that we're really thinking about AI uh, and the value that it can provide to our agencies uh, in our community. And several of the features, a lot of these are actually already out and available. If you haven't played around with them yet, I encourage you to do so. We have an AI content creation assistant. That's the one I referred to earlier, which again, you can generate content for within the site, uh, edit it, revise it, expand it, um, change the tone, change the length. Uh, it's a very capable, very robust tool. We also have AI generated SEO tools. So you can instantly generate meta descriptions, alt tags, uh, Meta, meta titles, any of your SEO metadata can be, all be generated automatically within the platform. And again, the alt text uh, generator is actually one of my favorite tools. It's one of those things that you don't necessarily think about doing or it's just a time suck. Um, it can analyze the images and generate an alt text. It's really, really accurate. I honestly almost never have to make changes to it, which is super, super exciting. Um, and you can also do this at scale. So this is one of the most exciting tools within our, our the Duda platform today is our bulk AI SEO tool. You can, instead of going page by page and generating SEO metadata, you can actually look at all of the pages uh, in a client site that you're working on and see which meta descriptions are missing. Um, you can generate new ones, edit it all from one dashboard, and then publish it all in one place. It's super fast, super easy, and really exciting. Um, and then we're also working on, I, I mentioned this earlier, uh, AI-based content collection uh, tools to help you build sites faster and AI-connected site sections as well. So these are these are things that are coming up in the, in, in the near future and we're excited to be able to, to, to launch them soon. Are all these AI tools uh, due to have wrappers around ChatGPT or is it using its own machine learning algorithm? So we evaluate, that's a really great question. Um, we evaluate what AI models that we use on a case-by-case -case basis. So it might vary uh, depending on the tool. The one I, we're using OpenAI for a content uh, generative tool right now. It's a great question. Uh, we have another one about Splashdash. Does Splashdash have access to our agency information once we use the tool? That's also a great nope. question, Ron. Yep. Yeah. Once again, no data is ever stored if you use Splashdash. Um, um, so we wouldn't see any information that you put in. When you use a MyGPT, when you click it, it creates a new conversation. So it's not like there's we can have any sort of information about the context. Uh, if you did integrate your Duda API, which I highly recommend, you, uh, you know, that wouldn't be Splashdash anyways. That would be your own private MyGPT if that's what you, the route you were going to go. But Splashdash doesn't have any uh, recollection of what you put in. Yeah. And good shout out from Scotty. The AI generated sections tools is amazing. I've been able to test it a bit myself. And yes, it is. It will save so much time. Very exciting. Uh, and that's kind of the key is, is like, you know, with Duda working with these specific features, really listening to the community and, and us you know, t telling us what, telling you guys what we want, and then you guys actually listening and doing it. Because 
the, the key here is not to like eliminate jobs and to, um, you know, the key here is, is like writing image alt tags, that's not like creative, right? And so right. a lot of these tasks that dude is building in natively into the platform has allowed us to focus on what's the next ad gonna say, or it's allowed us to take another call, or it's allowed us to take a client to a coffee. AI can't do that. And so if Absolutely. whatever AI can do, that is, it, it, that's, that's how we look at that. Yeah, I think that's an excellent example. It's like, yeah, no one's job is to write alt text necessarily, but saving that, you know, extra five minutes every time you're publishing a blog post or publishing something on the website for your clients, that's five minutes you can spend doing something so much more meaningful, so much more uh, powerful for your business. And so that's that's really how we're thinking about AI. And it, it's very cool to see the community sharing what they what they're looking for and to be able to to provide the tools and the and the resources for them to be able to do this. So. I think that's it for our questions today, Ruan. Uh, thank you so much for showcasing uh, some of the really cool applications you're using with it, with the API, uh, with Duda's API access and with ChatGPT. I think this, these are really helpful, valuable, uh, practical things people can take uh, today. And I, I saw the, the polls flashing on the screen here. Um, Anton, I can, can you pull that up again. Um, has AI changed the way you do business? This is really, really interesting. Uh, yes, significantly 40%, somewhat 51%, not at all 7%. This is, again, very similar to what we're seeing. Um, and we want to help you guys get there, get there, figure out how to how to do this in the best way for your business. So thank you again for, for joining. And Ron, do you have any closing thoughts that you want to add here? <laughs> No, I think that's it. Um, just get comfortable with it. Um, it's here to stay. And the Gardner hype cycle tells us we're in a quiet time for it right now, but it will be back. And when it's back, just be prepared because there's a lot of profit that you can make by understanding how to make your jobs easier. And the next evolution is kind of what we showed today where it's connected to important data places and you don't have to prompt anything. It just knows everything about you already. Absolutely. So cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys.